Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Wrap. My hair just gets wilder every single night that I take a shower right before my second stream. <laughs> today is Tuesday, the 15th of February, 2022. Interesting day today, to say the least. Let's start off with the pre-stream podcast, where there was so much news to talk about regarding early release scores, for uh, or review scores, excuse me, for Horizon Forbidden West, um, Cyberpunk getting an update today, uh, all just all kinds of stuff in general. Tons of gaming news to talk about. Plus, me talking about my day off yesterday, which didn't go as planned. It's a pretty funny story. Definitely check out the podcast if you have not had a chance to watch it yet. It was a good one today. Uh, but on the podcast, a monkey wrench kind of got thrown into my plans for the week, and here's why. <clears throat> uh, someone by the name of Game Trekker, who is someone who's interested in put me playing King of Fighters 15 later this week, came and shared some information with the viewers and basically said... There's been research now done because people have gotten their hands on both versions of uh, King of Fighters 15, which I'm going to be playing all day this coming Thursday, by the way. Brand new release, big high-profile fighting game, okay? Well, originally I was going to play it on PS5. Everyone seemed to be under the impression that the PlayStation 5 version would be the most prominent one, that there'd be way more of a player base on PlayStation than Xbox, and therefore I should get it on PS5. Well, they did testing. Come to find out... The PS5 version has over 5 milliseconds of input delay. The PS4 version has something like uh, 4 milliseconds of input delay. And the Xbox Series X and S versions have 3 milliseconds of delay. For those who don't understand the technicalities of fighting games, what this means is when I press a button on a controller, on the Xbox, it'll come out and react more quickly than on the PlayStation consoles. Why? You know, like, why? That's terrible. That means that you're going to get an inequivalent experience depending on what console you buy it for, with the PlayStation 5 actually being the worst and the Xbox actually being the best. Now, I have a joystick for Xbox. The Xbox Hori Fighting Stick Alpha, which was donated to me in December around Christmas time by a viewer. So if I get King of Fighters on the Xbox... I might get the absolute best experience when it comes to controls and responsiveness. It does not mean I'm going to get a lot of competition on there. I don't know what to do. I'm totally up in the air, and I'd like your feedback. If anyone out there knows more about this situation, if you know what the FGC, fighting game community, is going to do, like wh what version people are, are planning on buying, I'm all ears because I want to get the version that's the best for the viewers and for me long term, and at this point, I don't know what to do. I was debating maybe buying both, but man, that's a lot of money to invest. $140 plus tax to buy the two versions of the game and then not to even guarantee that it's going to catch on either with the viewers or as a competitive fighting game. Oh, I, I just don't know. I'm on the fence right now. All right? So if anyone has information, please let me know. Hey, leave comments on this video. Email me, whatever. I need more info. As as uh, Johnny5 from Short Circuit would say, need input. Need more input. Because Johnny Five is alive. So, thank you. Now, the first gameplay stream of today was Sifu Endgame. And I didn't know how much I was going to be able to do. Guess what? I beat the entire stage four. Uh, basically had to get to the boss and figure out how to master the boss. I did. The boss basically hit me like twice. Was able to get past that boss with almost no issue once I learned the high-low uh, evade uh, pattern. Got to the fifth level, got through the whole thing, got to the final boss, beat him. So I beat the game. But that's not the end of Sifu. Because Sifu requires you to go through the entire game again, and this time around, sparing every boss. How do you spare the bosses? You don't kill them. Instead, you parry till their stagger bar fills, and then you have to wait, and then it regenerates, and you do it again, and then it says you can spare them. It's a hidden way to defeat the bosses that I wasn't aware of the first run through, so I didn't do it because I didn't know that it existed. Okay, so this time around, I did it, and I was able to do all five bosses and see the secret ending of the game on today's stream. I got good, as they say. I was parrying nicely and to good timing. The final boss has this flurry of attacks. I was going parry, 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 and parrying every hit. It was crazy. People loved it. They were like, wow, you basically mastered the game. I was like, yeah, this is basically what happened with Sekiro. When I first started playing Sekiro, I didn't get it. I sucked ass. I got infuriated at the game because I thought it was so difficult. Then it clicked. Once it clicked how to do the parries, the rest was history. But it basically took me about half of the game. Once I got halfway through the game, 
Second half of the game was like a breeze for me. Final boss was easy. I beat him on the third try, you know. Um, same thing here with, with Sifu. Uh, once I figured out, okay, so there's a parry, there's a dodge, there's an evade. You have to know the situation to do each. You need to know how to do what, get the upgrades as you play. And then it basically became easy by the end. And it was fun. In fact, Sifu right now, definitely, definitely in my mind is a game of the year contender. Now keep in mind, it's super early. It's only February. There's going to be many more games coming out this year, but I loved it. So if you didn't see it yet, watch the conclusion. It's very e epic, exciting. It's like the last minute. I'm, everything comes together. I'm going, Perry, 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 Perry. <laughs> it's pretty fun. So check that out, okay? Now, today's late stream was Pokemon Legends Arceus. We had a lot of fun in the third region. The game has five regions. We're now in the third. And we basically got, I would say, probably about halfway through the region, uh, we explored upwards, ran into a woman who wanted to set up a base camp, so we went downwards, we set up the base camp, we caught a ton of new Pokemon. What we're trying to do is unlock a new Pokemon that can get us across water now, because there's an island we need to get to that basically has like the final dungeon of this area, and we're working on that right now. But it was fun, and you know, new Pokemon, a little frustrating. Admittedly, some of the Pokemon fights are getting ridiculous, some of the alpha Pokemon just end up being way over-leveled to your party. You know, why is every Pokemon in the area level 30, and I can easily catch them all, no problem, but all the alpha Pokemon are level 50, and I can't catch them at all. I whittled them down to this much health. I stun them with, with a sleep spell. I'm using the, the fucking balls. Nothing. They won't get caught. It pisses me off when that, that happens. But, still had fun. Now, one thing I do have to bring up, okay? Support. Wasn't good again. Um, Just being matter of fact here. Uh, I think we had like $33 in tips or something like that by the end of the night. I mean, it's not terrible. At least there's something. But... Two weeks ago, the situation we were in was that I was barely getting any support on the Pokemon streams. And I was like, we can still play it. I'm not dropping it. I don't want to drop it because I love the game, but we're just going to play it way less. Then immediately, we had two streams with great support. Seriously, like back-to-back -back streams, so, tons of support, tons of support. So I said, well, the support's coming back. I'll play it more. So I set up two Pokemon streams for this week. First stream, what happened? I don't know. This this game just seems very odd with the support. It's weird I, some days I'm playing Dying Light 2, a game that I'm not even liking, and I'm getting tons of support, right? But then I play Pokemon, I can't get any. I just, <laughs> it's so confusing. I don't know. It's just a weird thing. Anyway, the good news here is it's not a huge problem at all. There's so many new games coming out. There's so much stuff going on, and I did get a lot of support on the Sifu stream. The support has been great recently. I'm not complaining overall. I'm just saying, man, I, don't, I just don't know how to treat Pokemon. I just don't. All right, let's talk about the rest of the week. Tomorrow, Dying Light 2... Final last hurrah before hiatus. I'm doing a major stream of Dying Light 2 in the morning where it's three hours of story progression. That's what I'm going for, major story progression. We'll see where I get by the end of the three hours. <clears throat> and then the game's going on hiatus. There's just too much going on in the realm of new releases. King of Fighters, Horizon Forbidden West on Friday, uh, Elden Ring next week, continuing on with Pokemon and continuing with Skyrim. Those playthroughs, all five of those, I, I'm enjoying way more than De De uh, Dying Light 2, or at least I know. People are going to be enjoying those and want more of them. So Dying Light 2 will go on hiatus. Will it ever come back? I don't know. Let's see how, how it, we feel at the end of tomorrow's stream. Maybe there is hope for it. Um, and maybe people will want it back after we get rid of all the, the crazy high-profile new releases coming out. Or maybe this will be the end of it, which would be unfortunate. I'll be been around 15 hours into it at that point. I think after 15 hours, you should have an idea if the game's going to get any better. You know what I'm saying? So let's see after tomorrow's stream, okay? Tomorrow night... Skyrim Anniversary Edition, and the cool thing about this, we're in Riften. Finally, we're in Riften. There's so much to do in Riften. That's where the Brotherhood, Dark Brotherhood uh, missions start. That's where the <clears throat> Thieves Guild is. And you can start those missions. There's the Blackbriar plotline with, the, with them in the town. There's other missions. There's so much to do in that town. So I'm excited for a chill stream of Skyrim tomorrow on the late stream. I hope you'll join me for that. So then Thursday... I don't know what to do. This is why I need your feedback. I'm definitely playing King of Fighters all day Thursday, but I don't know if it's going to be on Xbox or PS5. I can't believe PS5 has so much added input lag. It really is making me feel like I should play it on Xbox. Okay? Um, but we'll see. Give me your feedback. Okay? So all day Thursday, King of Fighters. And then Friday, all day long, Horizon Forbidden West. Saturday will be King of Fighters paired with Pokemon. Sunday will be Horizon Forbidden West paired with with Skyrim. And I can confirm with you now my next day off is officially Monday. So, that's the week. Great streaming day today. Can't wait for tomorrow. Then new releases non-stop. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good night. See you in the AM. Peace out.